When I'm not doing the bare minimum to protect my mental health, I like to answer questions and comments that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Please do the major chord version of this lesson. Absolutely, so this is a question that was on a lesson I gave last week about just kind of cool little inflections and double stops that you can use with any minor chord. So today we're gonna to do the major chords, right? Basically what we're gonna do is gonna sound a little bit like this. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff that you can learn just by seeing a little bit of a scale and then how to use that scale to make stuff that sounds cool. All right, so I'm using the D'Angelico Deluxe SS today. We're gonna start in the people's key, key of G. Three main chords, three major chords are the one, the four, and the five. G major, C major, D major. You can play them open if you want. It doesn't really matter how you play them, but this is gonna be something that I never ever want you to forget, all right? All of these chords have something in common aside from just you know the, the root note, the major third and the fifth, they all share a lot of the same notes relative to itself. Now, what that means is, if we just take the G, A, B, D, E, and G. So this little shape right here. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Basically, these are the notes, the five notes, that all three major chords have in common in the same key, okay? The first note of the major scale, the second note, the third note, the fifth note, and the sixth note, okay? So you can start on any root note in any major chord and play these five notes, and then that sixth one is the octave again, right? So if we started on a C, it would look like this. 3A, 5A, 7A, 5D, 7D, Octave C. If we start on a D, the fifth fret, five, seven, nine, seven D, nine D. So a really cool exercise to do would just be to do this. Okay, so that's one thing. It doesn't sound musical, it sounds like an exercise. There's a time and a place for musical exercises, a time and a place for just woodshed exercises like that. Where I think it comes in really cool is when you can start double stopping through things, all right? Now, the, the music theory question you might have is like, well, why did they share those notes and not some of the other ones, right? You said you took the major scale to take the first, the second, the third, the fifth, and the sixth note. What about that fourth note and the seventh note, okay? So uh, if this really confuses you, I'm just going to go over this quick, but uh, I'll, I explain this in more detail on my Patreon if you want to check that out. But essentially... The G major scale looks like this. Three, five, seven, three, five, seven, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. C's position in this spot would have what's called a sharp four, okay? So that four, that fourth note away is something that the one chord and the four chord don't have in common. And then if we were to do G's position, it has a flat seven, right? D's position, I think I said D, but yeah. So D has a flat seven in the key of G. C has a sharp four in the key of G. So as long as we just avoid those fours and sevens in this context, you can use this kind of lick type thing in any octave, right? Go higher. All over the neck, right? So there's a million different things we can do. We're just gonna do a couple different examples of this right here, all right? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna branch off of this G chord and I'm gonna think of just these four notes right here, 5A, 7A, 5, 7D. Okay, and I'm gonna start playing through them as double stops, right? So, and I guess actually I'm also getting the, the fifth fret on the G string, so. So it's kind of like a little lick that I'm gonna add to a G major chord, all right? So now what I'm doing here, a double stop, is when you play two notes at the same time. I'm getting five and five on the A and D string, then seven A and five D. And I'm doing the same thing down a string, so five D and five G, and then seven D and five G. Forward and backwards, right? So we can add that as an extension of a G, and I'm thinking of just starting two frets higher, one string down. So G major chord, 
Any way you can combine those four, five notes is fair game, okay? Now, as long as we're rooting on the E string, we can do any of that stuff. We could go to the next chord, the C chord on the A fret, so we go G. That's just the A fret. And again, two frets higher, one. So that's all just tracking one string, but I do think that there's probably more utility in starting on the A string rooted four and five chord, right? So let's go C major and D major. You can do them as like a bar chord, or you could just take the A major shape on the fifth fret, five D, five G, five B, and then the seventh fret for the D major chord. Right? Now, what's cool here is we can kind of do essentially the same thing because now my pointer finger is really that two frets higher down a string type deal. And then we can do the double stops from here, five to seven, five to seven, five B. So C major. And then I'm already just right there to go to D. Especially when you're maybe ending a song, I think it sounds good to do that because what's cool about you know ending a song and building up resolution, usually you go to the five chord and back to the one chord. So like a G major to a D major to a G. Well the nice thing about we're kind of getting that D root note, which is in the chord, but kind of playing it by itself or as part of a double stop kind of gives you a it feels like you're going to a to a five to a one but that's just one half of what i want to talk about there's also an arpeggio that you can make from this to maybe get a little higher up the neck okay so let's start on the regular g major chord we started with and again my favorite just arpeggio that i always do with major chords is okay so it'd be like I start with my root note. Uh, I take that two that people are going to give me a hard time about and slide it into the major third, into the fifth, and there's the octave. But the next octave of it, I think, is more, I, I feel like it's more appropriate for an arpeggio in between chords type vibe, right? So you can think of with a bar chord where your pinky is, right? And then that's really your launching point. in that chord. So you can do this over any major chord wherever you have a root note on the D string. You just go two frets higher, two frets higher, two frets back down a string, and then compensate and go diagonal to the B string. And that's your octave, right? So the eighth fret on the B string is the same note as the fifth fret on the D string, right? So I'm thinking of that as an arpeggio lead, lick, line, whatever. Even though I'm kind of going out of order sometimes, right? So thinking in an arpeggio way has led me to these notes. I don't have to play them in order. And again, you can do that over anything. The nice thing about that exact same line, let's go to that C major chord. Well, where's our root note in the C major? The G string is in the root note, right? So 5G. This would be that same arpeggio starting on the G string, okay? So it's kind of in the middle if you're barring it. So you're already right there on 5G. 7, 9. Now it's 5th. We have to compensate for that B string. So 5, 7, 9, 8, B. go to the root note on the high E string, right? Right there, there's our C, 
Okay, so here's a C major chord. Okay, and I think this is a great way to transition between two different ideas, at least how I always thought of it. I, th I usually think of like, all right, A string rooted stuff and, B and E string rooted stuff, right? So it's like, here's my C major stuff that I can do around that C chord or this C chord. I already taught it thinking in those two different ways. But the cool thing about this arpeggio is it kind of leads you from one A string rooted starting point into the E string rooted starting point. It kind of gets you from here to there. So just really cool stuff that you can do just mixing and matching arpeggios. Impressive how bad you made this new unit sound. Really threw a monkey wrench into my purchasing research. LOL, you played on your neck pickup the whole time and used an insane amount of reverb and poor recording tech. Maybe hold on to your pedal board for now. Salty Blues comment on demoing a pedal, not using high fancy recording tech, which is still sounded pretty good. The funny thing about like demos, which is why I don't, you know, I'll, I'll do demos, but they're not really like reviews because you're never going to satisfy everybody. I just like kind of using them in what I would consider a normal context of doing it. I feel like taking a budget guitar pedal and running it through $8,000 of recording equipment seems a little in inappropriate for like a, like a real demo, right? I, I, don't, I don't know. That's just, that's just my take on it. Stay salty. Top notch video, great breakdown of some harmonic function in a super understandable way. Please post a full song lesson on the Patreon if you can. Love a great song with lots of movements to practice those seventh chords and think about the theory behind it. Yeah, thanks so much. So this is on a video I did on kind of diagnosing the music theory behind Fly Me to the Moon, Frank Snatch song. Great, great idea. I'm gonna post a full song lesson on the Patreon because it's like such a good song, right? It, it's worth doing it. So I'll try to get that lesson up on the Patreon tonight. Also just posted a video on the Patreon yesterday about uh, keeping tight chord voicings. So definitely check that out because it's the best $12 value on the internet. That looks so fun to mess around with. Love the lo-fi and synth wave. Thank you, Sam. So this is on the video I posted, I believe yesterday with the Roland SPDSX Pro. That thing is awesome. Huge fan of that. I basically did a video where it's like uh, trying to like fake learn five different genres. And uh, I think the metal one actually sounded the best out of all of them. But the lo-fi one sounded pretty cool too. So uh, if you don't know, I actually made a lo-fi Christmas album, which now apparently is the time that we're all allowed to start listening to Christmas music again. So do your boy a favor and check out the lo-fi Christmas album. Let me know what you think. You're a lucky man, Sean. What NBA team are you a fan of? I'm a lifelong, oh, New York Knickerbocker fan. So yeah, I'm a huge NBA stan. Uh, I've been playing basketball my whole life. I'm born, born in Chicago, so the Bulls are kind of like my de facto team. But really, until Jimmy Butler retires, whatever team Jimmy Butler on is my team. So even though the Heat are off to a slow start, I have hopes that they will turn it around because I'm just like a huge Jimmy Butler fan. But uh, I just am a fan of the whole league. So aside from my Patreon, I think the best deal on the internet right now, also aside from anything you can get on Sweetwater.com, is probably NBA League Pass. I, I watch League Pass pretty much, pretty much every night. So. Uh, if you guys are thinking about it, that's actually that's actually really good value. Because I'm just a fan of the league. So uh, go Bulls, even though they suck. Go Heat, even though they suck. And I refuse to war root for the Warriors for any any reason. So I got my Spotify wrap today. So listening homework, I'm going to make you listen to what I have apparently been listening to almost all year. And that's Big Thief. Love Big Thief. Super underrated band, even though they're pretty big for an indie band. But uh, they're just the best. So... Thanks for watching. Check that out. Uh, like I said, sign up for the Patreon if you're classy. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.